For Montana East Regional News, this is Emily Boyles. I am with Pamela Columbic, who is a clinical therapist and the associate director at the Miles City Office of the Eastern Montana Mental Health Center. And Pamela, over the last several days and, and over the last couple of weeks, there have been many difficult stories about sex offenders in eastern Montana, some of whom held positions of responsibility, a teacher, a former police officer. Parents have come to us and said, our children are hearing about this. They want to know now why they need to respect police officers and teachers if they do bad things to kids. What's the best response? My suggestion would be to families is that they continue to tell their children that people in positions of authority that we assume are safe individuals that they need to show respect. I think it is more important that they teach their children about boundaries and warning signs to look for with people who sometimes may have bad intentions that we assume are good people. That does happen on occasion. For the most part, though, they need to understand that policemen are safe teachers, daycare providers, whatever the case may be. But it starts in the home as far as teaching them what things to look for, knowing where their kids are, checking on their kids, who they can go to, teaching even at a very young age um, about instincts, things that don't feel comfortable. If an adult in a position of authority tells them to disobey their parents, do something that doesn't feel right, that children should be able to know that that's not okay and they can go tell somebody. Uh, usually if children are out and about, if they're in numbers, that's safer. Teaching the children to speak up that it is okay when something isn't going right, that they still can tell someone even if they think that might be disrespectful. So I think it's a lot of groundwork that we have to work with our children to be safe in a lot of situations and that may help them understand that for the majority the policemen and teachers and all of them are safe people. Talking to your children about warning signs, safe people, especially when you live in a small community, can be challenging. Can you give families resources that they can put into their toolbox where they can find those resources to be able to talk to their children? I would recommend you can go to the library and you can get tools there on safety. There are various links on the computer, like um, the National Crime Prevention Association with the McGruff Crime Dog. There are things that are listed on there, um, like Sonata, the domestic abuse organization, often has handouts and articles to provide the mental health center. Uh, the private practitioners, any of those may have um, educational material. There's a lot of different places that you can go to begin providing that information because I believe it should start when children are young. So the schools may have some information, particularly with a lot of the events that have been going on now, even the police department. Any of those may have resources that are age appropriate for children that you could begin reading to them and going through it. In the kind of conversations we're talking about, families are talking about some uncomfortable information. Sometimes the children may have heard it on television or radio. They may have heard people in the community talking about these recent events. What happens if a child says, mom and dad, somebody did this to me, or they start saying things that the parents feel may need a little bit deeper questioning? What are things that parents should or should not do in those kinds of situations? What's the best response? Well, I think there's a few suggestions. One is to not overreact or say, oh, my gosh, or something like that so that a child shuts down. I think that's one of the most common uh, responses that the parent's going to give because depending on what the child might be saying, a parent's natural instinct would probably to be... Um, angered or whatever the case may be. So if a parent can keep their emotions in check in front of the child, I think that's important. It's important to believe the child and, and then at a later time um, go to the authorities, be that Department of Family Services. They have a child hotline number that you can call. 
You could go to your local, local Department of Family Services office or the police department to make a disclosure, and then they could investigate from there. But if children don't believe that parents believe them, they will not talk about it anymore, or if they get a response that they're going to be in trouble or not believed, children will also shut down. So I think as far as the initial disclosure from a child talking about it, that those are things that will um, shut the child down faster than anything else. So I think they need to allow them to talk and uh, tell them they're going to get them some help and that they're proud of them for talking about that so that they can get to a therapist and get the child working on healing. Once that process has started, are there resources in eastern Montana, western North Dakota to help a child and a family heal? Yes, there are in both in all of those counties in eastern Montana there are mental health centers, there are private practitioners. Uh, the um, Sonata, for example, has um, outlets for sexual abuse, physical abuse. They've got support groups, at least in Custer County. I'm not sure. I, I think they do also in Dawson. Those are resources, but starting with um, a mental health center or a private practitioner or even a physician can make a referral if they take their child in for an examination. They can make a referral to someone that they believe would be helpful in moving on with the healing process. Over the last couple of years, there's been some very high-profile cases where adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse disclose for the first time later in life. There's some similarities between that and some of the cases recently in eastern Montana. How late is too late to disclose if you were violated as a child? I guess that would depend on which professional that you're talking to. My opinion would be it's never too late. I've had people that I work with in my practice that are in their later adulthood have disclosed abusive things happening to them that was triggered by possibly a grandchild or somebody else in their circle coming up with those experiences. So what happens and it makes them remember what happened. So I believe that at any given time, it's never too late to disclose and begin healing from whatever it was that occurred in your childhood or early adulthood or whatever the case may be. And if someone finds themselves in that situation where they need to talk to somebody, can they call your agency or who can they call? Yes, the mental health center, um, which we have offices in Mile City, Glendive, Sydney, Glasgow. We have outreach offices from all of those areas. We also have one in Forsyth, Coal Strip. So any of those areas and then satellite offices, which I could name all of them, but they all have professionals that would be able to help or refer to someone that could help in these situations. And if you do decide that you have the need to talk to a therapist or a counselor at any of the Eastern Montana Mental Health Center offices, you can call Glendive. That's 406-377-6075. Mile City, that's 406-234-1687. Or Sydney, that's 406 433 Four six three five. Each of those offices also have after-hours crisis numbers on their answering machines. We've been talking with Pam Columbic, clinical therapist at Eastern Montana Mental Health. If you would like those phone numbers, you can also email us at newsdesk at kxgn. For Montana East Regional News, this is Emily Boyles.